Today we are talking about rainwater harvesting system components. As you can see in this image, uh, your rainwater comes off your roof into the uh, uh, first flush device. When the first flush device fills up with rainwater, there's a, a check ball that floats up and seals off the opening, allowing the rainwater to then flow out into your rainwater collection tank. Uh, as the rainwater flows into your collection tank, there is a dip tube, or you can see a piece of pipe that goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank with a U-shaped calming inlet, and that helps reduce turbidity and uh, reduces the chance of stirring up sediment on the bottom of your tank to help keep the water cleaner and clearer. You'll also note there is a floating pump inlet with the screen, and that floating pump inlet sits about four inches below the surface of the water level. And what that does is make sure that you're only sucking the clean water in the center of the tank, uh, not the water from the very bottom and not the water on the surface, just in case there is any fine particulate or debris in there. The water then travels through a check valve into the uh, supply pump that supplies the water to the filters and the uh, UV sterilizer and then to your household plumbing fixtures. And that's basically just a shallow well jet pump. And that's controlled by a float switch. So here's a closer look at the flush, first flush device or first flow uh, diverter. And you can make this yourself or you can buy them online. Um, you can make it out of three inch diameter PVC pipe or four inch diameter PVC pipe. And again, there's a removable screen at the top to catch leaves and dead bugs and debris like that that might flow off your roof. You can see a closer view of the check ball there. It's important that you screw these to a solid structure on the side of your house because um, it obviously will get heavy when it's full of water. And then there's a drain on the bottom to drain out the collected water um, after every rain event. And the length of that PVC pipe will depend on how large a surface area your roof is and how many gallons you want to um, collect first before you allow the water to flow into your rainwater storage tank. Obviously, the more water you collect in the first flush device, the better chance the water is going to be clean going into your rainwater storage tank. But a first flush device is uh, vital. It's very important to have that in place because when it first starts to rain, you want to, you don't want all the dust and debris and leaves and dead bugs and bird poop on your roof to go into your water tank. That's why it's important to divert those first several gallons into this first flush device. And again, it's made out of PVC pipe. You can buy this at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, glue it together yourself. So now we move on to uh, the actual rainwater storage tank. This one is a thousand gallon plastic water storage tank. It is FDA approved uh, linear polyethylene with UV inhibitors. You always want to use an opaque tank, never a transparent or translucent tank when you're storing water outside. Because if you allow sunlight to get into the, interact with the water, uh, you can start to grow biologicals, uh, you know, like bacteria, green algae, that kind of thing. You don't want that in your water storage tank. And this one you can see is right around 600 bucks, uh, not including shipping costs. So if you can pick it up, if you have a flatbed truck or rent a truck, you can go and pick it up yourself if you don't want to pay the delivery charges. But yeah, always buy an opaque tank, uh, black, blue, tan, green, etc. Never translucent, never transparent. And there are several tank suppliers you can find online to purchase your rainwater storage tanks. And they do offer underground storage tanks if you would prefer an underground storage tank. So now we'll take a closer look at the major components. This is a closer look at the floating pump inlet. You can see basically it's a floating ball 
and it's attached to an in inlet screen and it has a barb fitting that attaches to a flexible hose. Again, you can buy these online. They start around $200 and go up from there. Um, you can also make them yourself if you don't want to buy one. You can buy the floats. You can buy the inline uh, screened inlet. So you have a couple options there and always use stainless steel clamps. And just a quick Google search and you can find a floating pump inlet pretty easily. But yeah, brass, stainless steel, and plastic is what you want to use uh, so that way you don't have to worry about rusting inside of your rainwater storage tank, especially if you're going to be using it for potable water uses. So here's a close-up of what a calmed inlet fitting looks like. Uh, this one is a 4-inch calmed inlet that you can buy at Home Depot for $61. Um, if you don't want to spend quite that much money, if it's not in your budget, you can actually make your own out of PVC pipe fittings. You see on the right hand side, uh, you can glue two inch, uh, excuse me, two four inch 90 degree elbows together and essentially create the same fitting for a lower cost. And again, Lowe's and Home Depot has those uh, PVC pipe fittings or you can go online to Supplyhouse.com, Granger, McMaster Car, etc. Another option um, is an overflow siphon. So on your overflow, inside your water storage tank, you would attach this. Basically, it looks like a P-trap with a, a skimmer head and that just helps any particulate that's floating on the surface sort of get skimmed off and exit out of your tank is the idea behind these. Again, not 100% necessary, but it would be a good best practice to install one on your overflow line at the top of your tank. And here's a, a close-up view of the uh, supply pump. This would be the pump supplying water to your water filters, your UV sterilizer, and then to your plumbing fixtures. As a bladder tank, a pressure gauge, and it's controlled by a pressure switch. That is the black box you see there on the side of the pump. So when you open a faucet, the water pressure would drop. The pressure switch would sense that, kick the pump on, and then when the pressure in your water pipes got back up to the set point, it would shut the pump off. And these are readily available as well. This one's from Harbor Freight for $149. And again, these are usually called a shallow well uh, pressure pump or jet pump, booster pump. And these are readily available as well. So here's a close-up example of a whole house water filtration system. So this is where you'd want to uh, plumb into your outlet of your supply pump would go into these filters first. Generally there's a sediment filter followed by a carbon block filter. And then we move on to UV sterilizers. There's two basic types. One on the left is a submersible uh, UV sterilizer that you actually submerge in the water. The one on the right is an inline UV sterilizer. So after the filters, the water would flow through that UV sterilizer and then out to your plumbing fixtures. These two are readily available if you do just a quick Google search. Um, I prefer the submersible type because that way all of your water in the water storage tank is constantly being exposed to the UV sterilizer and uh, making sure that you're killing off any um, microbes or bacteria in the water. Another great option is a freshwater makeup valve. It could be a manual float valve like you see pictured here on the left. So when the water level drops, the float drops, opens a valve. 
when the water level rises, the float floats up and shuts the valve off. Or on the right is a 120 volt float switch that controls a 120 volt solenoid valve. And the principle is the same. When the float floats down, it opens the valve. When the float floats up with the water level, it closes that solenoid valve. Especially if you're depending on your rainwater storage tank to be your sole source of water supply for your house. Um, this would be a good sort of backup safety just to ensure you never run out of water. You can always top it off from a private well or if you do have a city uh, water supply to your property. Just check with your local authority to make sure you, they don't require a anti-siphon backflow prevention device. Uh, they might just require a one-way check valve. Again, you can call your local uh, city authority to find out for sure. And there are calculations online, formulas you can use to calculate how much water you use annually, and that'll tell you what size rainwater storage tank you need, or if you need to buy two or three or four rainwater storage tanks to supply your water all year round. And again, a quick Google search can help you figure that out as well. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave me a comment for future video topics you would like me to cover.